Hello and welcome to the Xperia Movie YouTube channel. After a long time, the Sony Xperia V has come back to our lab. I spent some time this week using it as my main phone to find out how good this phone really is and whether my first impression of this device have signed change. In addition, the phone now runs finely tuned Android 412 Jelly Bean firmware update. So let's take a look at how this phone works after extended use. First of all I have to highlight the breathtaking screen. Of course others may have a different option, but no matter which other model this device put it next to, for example Sony Xperia SP, Sony Xperia Z or Sony Xperia T. The result is that the colors of the Sony Xperia V display are simply the best. The most beautiful, plus it also has the best viewing angles. The phone has not only a stunning display, but also excellent build quality. It is compact, light and very strong, plus I like its cute chin. The screen is perfectly sized with an incredibly sharp display, thanks to its high pixel density which is completely satisfying. If we take a look at the phone's menu, we find Android 412 Jelly Bean which is not so surprising these days. The launcher is fast enough and we can even change the number of home screens. We've always had quality temps, yet especially on Sony Xperia V, they are even better than elsewhere due to the quality display. If we look further at the range of the temps, the red one is nice and distinct, yet not too saturated and actually looks great. Not everyone likes a white background in their system applications, but fortunately there are modifications available for this phone that give it a black background and I dare say it makes the phone look much, much better. The Sony Xperia V is equipped with a modern dual-core processor. Today it's possible to find even quad-core devices but please don't be fooled, the device has a plenty of horsepower, you will never have to worry about a lack of power. On the other hand, this processor means the phone has great stamina. Once the phone is running low on juice, it automatically enters extended standby mode, however, it lacks the well-known stamina mode. I must confess, I really don't understand why manufacturers add this function to some phones, but not to others, but I suppose there must be a reason. Otherwise, the display is bright, regardless of choosing the black theme. The blacks are really black, which helps make the other colors look even more pleasant. Maybe you already know, but for a long time I was deciding between the Sony Xperia V and Sony Xperia T. Thanks to the, its early availability, I ended up with the Xperia T. Overall, I regard the Xperia T as Sony Mobile's flagship model during the second half of 2012, not only due to better availability, but also because of its design, its separate camera button and other fine details. I'm actually using an official Android 422 Jelly Bean on my Xperia T, because I have been testing some new camera functions. It seems the manufacturer decided to prefer Xperia T, but to be fair to Sony Xperia V owners, I must say that if I was choosing a new phone right now, I would choose Sony Xperia V.
even thought it lacks feature such as dedicated camera button and has worse XD, XDA support, I think its design is much better than Xperia T. To add to this device is waterproof, along with the Georgia's display and the fact that the screen is a bit smaller is all in favor of the Xperia V. Even today, Sony Xperia V is a high-end mobile phone and it is easily com comparable to the latest high-end devices such as the Xperia SP. Unfortunately, this has prevented the price from falling, which I consider a problem. Not everyone has so much money to spend on this type of mobile phone and the price of the Sony Xperia V is still a bit too steep. If we compare the Xperia V and the Xperia SP, they are in many ways very similar. The Xperia SP has a more modern processor, however I don't see this as much of a problem as both phones are powerful and well built. The Xperia SP has the advantage of a higher capacity battery, yet the Xperia V has, as mentioned several times, a much better screen as well as its waterproof body. The choice is extremely difficult, so if you choose the Sony Xperia V early on, you can stay satisfied as it's a brilliant phone with no weak points and since it was updated to Android 4.1.2, it runs extremely well. What's more, the phone was updated shortly after its release, so very few had to deal with Android 4.04 ice cream sandwich. Therefore, I can say I am almost completely satisfied with the Sony Xperia V. If this phone had also included an infrared blaster to control household applicants or even a dedicated hardware camera button, I probably wouldn't wait for a future model, I would simply purchase Sony Xperia V and I would be very satisfied. I would also welcome the car notification bar, so if these three things were included in the Xperia V, then I would definitely be completely satisfied as it would be the telephone that would last me for a very long time. So that is the Sony Xperia V. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much. I focus on my personal impression of this device as simply reading a list of parameters wouldn't make much sense. Thank you for attention and I hopefully you will be hearing from me soon. Mm -hmm.